Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about another hook, which is use callback. Before we dive into the details of use callback hook, let us first understand a bit about performance optimization. Once we understand that, we will then take a look at what exactly use callback hook is, why you might want to use it, and finally how to use it. Let's begin. Now to save us some time, I have already set up the components. So let us first go over the code. In app.js, I have included one component called parent component. The component is simply a container for other components. If you take a look at the JSX, you can see that we have five components in total of which two are reused with different props. The first component is the title component. If I open title.js, you can see that the title component simply renders an h2 tag that says use callback hook. Right after the title component, we have a count component to display the current age of a person. And we also have a button component to increment the age of that person. How is this implemented? Well, at the top of the parent component, we have declared a state variable and a setter function using the state hook. So age and set age with an initial value of 25. In the JSX, we first have the count component to which we pass age as a text prop and the age variable itself. In the count component, you can see that we are just rendering those props in the browser, text and count. Nothing complicated here. After the count component, we have a button component to increment the person's age. We pass in a prop called handle click, whose value is a function called increment age. Increment age basically calls the setter function for age, passing in age plus one. If you take a look at button.js, you can see that it is a straightforward button element with on click equal to handle click prop and the inner text equal to the children prop. Props.children refers to the increment age text in parent component. So a component to display the person's age and a component to increment the person's age. Now the last bit of JSX is just like the person's age, but we deal with a person's salary instead. We have a state variable called salary and a setter function to set the salary. The initial value is 50,000. We also have a function to increment the salary by 1000. In the JSX, we reuse the count and button components, but we change the props. For the count component, the text is salary and the count to display is the salary again. For the button component, handle click is now equal to increment salary, which is the arrow function and the inner text is increment salary. To sum up, the parent component does five things. It displays a title, it displays a person's age, provides a button to increment that person's age, displays the person's salary, and provides a button to increment that person's salary. Now you might be thinking, why do we need to break this down into five components? Could we not just have all the JSX in the parent component itself and make it simpler? Well, we definitely could do that. But I have written the code in this particular way because we need to understand about performance optimization and of course the use callback hook. All right, now that we understand the code, let's take a look at the browser. You can see that the UI is as expected. A title which renders use callback hook, the person's age, a button to increment the age, person's salary, and a button to increment that salary. 
Now what we are really interested in is the performance. To get a better understanding of the performance, I have added log statements in title component, count component, and also the button component. The log statement is added just to indicate if the component is being rendered onto the screen. So back in the browser, I click on refresh and open DevTools. You can see the five log statements, one for each of the components being rendered. Rendering title, rendering age, rendering button for increment age, rendering salary, and of course, the button for increment salary. So nothing unexpected. Now I'm going to clear this and click on the increment age button. The age value increments and the component is re-rendered. But if you take a look at the logs, you see that every component is re-rendered. I clear this, click on increment salary, and again, every component is re-rendered. This isn't really a problem with few components that have simple logic. But I want you to consider a scenario where there are lots of components and updating a single component is going to re-render all the 20 or 30 or even 50 components. You would then start seeing performance issues. To improve performance, we have to restrict re-renders to only components that need to re-render. In our example, when we increment the age, only the count component related to age and the button component for increment age should re-render. The other three components don't have to re-render. Similar is the case with salary. If you increment the salary, title and age components should not re-render. So how do we optimize this? Well, the answer is react.memo. React.memo is a higher order component that will prevent a functional component from being re-rendered if its props or state do not change. Please keep in mind, react.memo has nothing to do with hooks. It has been a feature since I believe React version 16.6. .6. So let's make use of that. In all the three components, when exporting, wrap your components with react.memo. So button, export default, react.memo, and pass in button. Similarly, for count, export default, react.memo, count. And finally, for title component, react.memo, title. And that is it. Your component will now re-render only if there is a change in its props or state. Let's test to see if this works. Back in the browser, on page load, you can see that all the components render once. Title, age, increment age, salary, increment salary. I click on increment age, and you can see that we now have fewer logs, but it is still not right. When we increment age, the button to increment salary is still being re-rendered. And if I click on increment salary, you can see that the button to increment age is being re-rendered. Let's try to understand why this is happening. If you go back to VS Code, we first see the title component. It has no props or state of its own and hence does not re-render when we increment the age or salary. Next, we have count and button related to age. Count accepts age as a prop and button accepts increment age as a prop, which is dependent on age as you can see. So when the age increments, both these components should re-render. But what we see is that the increment salary button also re-renders. 
The count component for salary though does not re-render. Let me quickly show this again. I refresh. We have all the five log statements. I click on increment age. The age related components re-render and the increment salary button as well. Now this is because a new increment salary function is created each time the parent component re-renders. And when dealing with functions, we always have to consider reference equality. Even though two functions have the exact same behavior, it does not mean they are equal to each other. So the function before the re-render is different to the function after the re-render. And since the function is a prop, react.memo sees that the prop has changed and will not prevent the re-render. And this is the same case when you increment salary as well. There is a new increment age function created which will cause the increment age button to re-render. So how do we fix this? How do we tell React that there is no need to create a new increment salary function when we update the age? The answer is use callback hook. Now what is use callback? Use callback is a hook that will return a memoized version of the callback function that only changes if one of the dependencies has changed. If we relate this to our example, what it means is that the use callback hook will cache the increment salary function and return that if salary is not incremented. If the salary does increment, that is if the dependency has changed, only then a new function will be returned. And why do we need use callback? Well, it is useful when passing callbacks to optimized child components that rely on reference equality to prevent unnecessary renders. Let's break this down. The first part is that it is useful when passing callbacks. That is functions like increment age and increment salary. The second part says to optimized child components. So we have three child components which have been optimized with react.memo to prevent unnecessary re-renders. Reference equality is nothing but checking if the functions are equal which is required for our example. If all the conditions are met, we should be using use callback to optimize further. So the last part to understand is how to use the callback hook. First step is to import it from React. So in parent component, import use callback from React. Second step, we need to call use callback. So use callback, which accepts a callback function as its first parameter and an array of dependencies as its second parameter. So the first parameter here is this arrow function, which I am going to paste within parentheses. And the second parameter is the dependency list. Our function depends on age. So let's specify age. And that is pretty much it. Let's do the same for salary. Use callback. The first parameter is this arrow function. And this function depends on salary. So now in both the cases, we return the cached function, which is then passed as a prop to the child components. Let's save this and test it out. On initial load, we have all five renders. I click on increment H. And we can now see only two components re-rendering. Salary button is not re-rendered. Similarly, I click on increment salary and we have only two re-renders and the age button is not re-rendered anymore. So we have successfully optimized all our components. So that is about use callback.
It is used to optimize performance. Now, a question you might have is, why not use the callback hook every single time? Well, to answer that question, I will leave a link to Ken Dodd's blog post, which will help you understand why using callback all the time is not a good idea. But for now, that is pretty much it about the use callback hook. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.